Hey everyone, if you haven't heard, Cisco Modeling Labs has support for containers. What does that mean? Well, we can actually run Docker containers inside our labs in CML. And one of those Docker containers is the Splunk Enterprise Container. This is included with the supplemental platform image and you can download it, add the container. There's also containers for Chrome and Firefox to give you web browser support right inside your labs. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can get some containers added to your CML instance, you have to have Cisco Modeling Labs 2.9. It's a requirement to be able to support containers. The previous releases didn't have support for it. You're not able to import the container tar.gz file. And so you have to have CML 2.9 to do this. If we go over to CML, uh, that Splunk image that you just saw, this dashboard here, this is actually running in a lab in CML collecting syslog data from devices that I have in this lab right here. You can see the Splunk Enterprise container running here, and you can see that it's you know using the Splunk Enterprise 9.4. And then we've got this Chrome container, which if I bring it up and do VNC, I will have a Google Chrome web browser. And I can come here and I can browse to my Splunk server and I get logged in and the data that I just showed you on the other dashboard will appear here in just a few seconds. So we've got 20 events. I haven't refreshed the other screens. Do a quick refresh just to show you that it does indeed match. And so we've got 20 events, six unique devices. We can see they both match up. But this is really cool. Uh, I do proxies a lot. I, I'm getting to this dashboard via a proxy, which I'm getting to via this Ubuntu proxy server, so I'm running Squid there. But this gives you an option now to have a self-contained lab. You don't have to do the proxy if you don't want to. You could just bring, put a Chrome container in here, build your network out. You'd be able to get access to the FMC, to Splunk, to any kind of web-based UI that is inside your CML lab without having the external connectivity. So it's a really handy feature to have. So how do we get these containers added? How do we add new node definitions and image definitions? When I get started, we're going to go to Tools. We're going to click Node and Image Definitions. Now, I already have Splunk added. I'm going to re-upload the Splunk container I have and adjust the naming on it so that we can add it again. The first thing we need to do is set up a node definition. Now, I have Chrome here. I've already added it. I'm going to add Firefox to this. Splunk would be the same process. We're going to do an import. We're going to select the node definition. I'm going to come down to this ref plat here, no definitions, and I'm going to select Firefox. Once it's imported, you can see we've got this Firefox no definition. Now, the no definition is the first thing that you need to actually start setting up additional images. This defines basically the type, right? Is it Firefox? Is it Chrome? Is it an iOS XE, you know, Caddy 1000V? And if we go back, you can see that we just have a unique node type for each thing that we're running here. So CAD 8000V, you do it once, you set all your node images up underneath of it. Chrome, you would do once. As new containers come out, they would just get added to this existing node definition. If we go back to Firefox, right? So it defines the nature. It tells us the available image definitions, some of the configuration details, how much memory we're gonna assign to it, what interfaces it has, what interfaces can be added to it, and you know, basically all the details about how it runs with Docker, additional arguments, things that we can edit and configure with. So we scroll back up, right? You can generally go out to the Cisco community. If I do a CML community GitHub, if there's third-party images you want to run, you can come out to node definitions. You can grab, they have got A10 out there, there's Arista. F5 Extreme, there's a lot of different images out here. You just need to bring the image. So you could download the YAML file, we could grab Arista for instance. You download this YAML file, add it as part of the node definitions. You can come back here, go to Tools. It'll be part of your image definitions once you import it. But now we need to add the image. The image is unique for each platform that we add, right? So if we add another Cisco 8000V, let's say it's 17152, right? We need to create a unique image. Same with Chrome or any of these here, right? We want a unique name. For Splunk, I can't add another 9.4 image. I've already got it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name it what it is actually called, which is 9.4.2. 
I'm going to do manage and I'm going to upload. I'm going to delete these because I already have them there, but we're going to upload. from viral base images, which is part of that reference platform image, Firefox, and we're gonna grab this container. We're gonna upload the file, and then we're gonna grab Splunk, which is on this other reference platform image, Splunk 9.4. And so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna create the Firefox image. Once this is finished uploading, so I create new image definition. I'm going to start typing Firefox. And I've done this a couple times, so the name is already there. But the ID needs to be unique. I believe this gets associated with the folder where the file is going to reside. So you will get a folder in your Unix home directory called Firefox-13804 build one, right? With all these dashes. The label have white space in it. So I'm going to do Firefox 13804 build one. This could be whatever you want to call it. You could just call it Firefox 138. But if you want to keep track of the versions you have there, you can put all that detail there. The description, I'm just going to call it Firefox 138. And then a node definition. Now you can see there's a list of things in here. Firefox is there. If the node definition doesn't exist, you won't be able to create. So if I click create, it's these fields are required. So you need the node definition first before you can do it. So I'm going to do Firefox. I'm going to select the disk image. I'm going to pick that Firefox image that we had. Now the disk hash. I'm going to grab this from here. There are ways to get the hash out of the container. I will have to do that in a different video. But basically there is a hash that is included with this YAML file here. And again, you can take all this data right out of the YAML file. You can't import this, but you could just come in here and copy the details out to complete that file that we just created. We're going to copy the SHA-256 hash. We're going to come back and we're going to paste it. And that's it. So we've got our disk image. We've got our hash. Nothing else left to do. We hit create. We've created our image definition. How can I add the Splunk container? Well, we're going to go back to node and image definitions. We're going to do add. I'm going to do Splunk. And I'm going to select this 942 that I've already done. I'm going to do Splunk 942. Now, I already have 9 4. This dash 2 is going to make it unique from the one that already exists. If I go here and do help, this is the actual version that's running. They just called it 94 on the reference platform, but I'm giving it the, the final octet. I'm telling it it's 942 just to make it more specific and unique for our import. And I'm just going to call this Splunk Enterprise 942. No definition is going to be Splunk. Disk image is going to be Splunk. And then I'm going to come back to this folder, go to this viral base images. I'm going to grab the hash. So we see that my Splunk YAML is open. There's my hash file. We'll go back and paste it. And I'm going to create the image definition. And that's it. Now, if I go look at node and image definitions, you can see that I have Splunk Enterprise 9.4 and I have Splunk 9.4.2. These are the same release, right? I am using the same, I have the same disk image imported, but they're two different folders, right? This is sitting in Splunk 9.4. This one should be sitting in a directory called 9.4.2. And we can kind of tell that based on, this is what the viral base images directory would look like when your file system. So we see that ID 9-4 matches what I have imported inside SAML. If we go back to Node, I only have that one Splunk instance created when I find it right there. You can see Splunk, Splunk Enterprise Docker. But if I look at available image definitions, I have two, right? Because the node definition is associating the image definition. So now I can have, you know, if I ever get a real release, like 9.4.3, 9.5, whatever, I can still have 9.4. I can have 9.5 running side by side with the existing image. 
when you get new releases of CML, when new versions of the ref pack come out and you import them, if you go look, generally you'll see that there will be multiple releases of the image definition inside your node definition. The other thing, something like iOS XR9, you might want to create a new node definition. The new releases require EFI, so UEFI based boot. This still uses the legacy boot and you might want to have just an image that's called iOS XRV 9000-EFI so you can run things like the 25 image which does require an EFI boot and that way you don't have to flip between it because it, it, you could if you wanted to but if you just want to separate which one is an EFI based boot versus a standard traditional legacy boot you could just have the different node definitions. The details for the most part would just be the same you're going to have an EFI boot section turned on with that XR release. If we go back to our dashboard, we've got Splunk. I'm going to stop these nodes here and we're going to start up a Firefox container just to show you. Click on it. You can see our build is in there. It's automatically going to pick it. I'm not going to do any configuration here, but the configuration here is a little bit different. So our boot SSH, or boot SSH is going to let us put in our IP addressing. So I could just uncomment this and I can do ETH0. I do wish it said ETH0 because you can see that that's the version it actually used. And then you could set your IP address, which is going to be 32, 32, one dot, just do Right, and so I could save this. The other thing that's there is an environment. This sets the environment up. It's all commented out here. But on Splunk, if we go to environment, it actually does a start arg of accepting the license and then sets the password. So if you want to set the password, the default's like Cisco something one, two, three, but it's a little bit, you know, got some numbers in there. If you want it to be your own unique password, you can change it to you know, whatever you want by selecting this environment configuration. And then you can set your IP addressing up here and start running the image. To run it, we've already saved it. I'm just going to hit start. You can see that it started. And the Firefox container is running. So super easy to add it. Not, not too difficult. I don't think I'm going to be able to get to the Splunk container because I don't have things actually configured for VLANs and such. could fix that. But if I had my network interfaces configured, I would be able to get to the Splunk Enterprise container. So that's it. That's configuring the, the Firefox container. Uh, that's at, you know, doing Splunk. So we can actually real quick, just add another Splunk node. There it is. And now that I've done it, I've got two image definitions. That again, it's the same container, right? This is not going to boot up a different version. I'm just saying that this is 942 because I wanted to have that unique image so that I could show you how to import the container. But that process basically follows through for every node type that you add. If the node exists, like it's an existing 8000 or a Nexus or anything that's already there, you're simply going to use the node definition that exists, upload a new image definition using the add tool, do the image definition and associate it with the existing node def and then attach your image. For the containers, you need the hash. Uh, in a future video, I'll show you how you can get that hash. For something like iOS XRV, I did mention, right, you could have a different node definition. If you're using the newer EFI releases, you might want to consider creating a unique node definition for that EFI release. That's how you get images added. It's pretty straightforward process once you do it a couple times. Uh, if you build a node definition from scratch, it does require kind of figuring out some of the values that you want for your image, but it's not a huge lift and you can look at some of the existing ones to get a good feel for the data that you do need in it. And I'm gonna actually walk you through in another video very soon, how to get this Splunk container running and operational. Again, I've got it running here. I am collecting data from my hosts inside CML. It's not giving me a ton of data. Uh, it's giving me some you know, number of events, unique devices. I did create my own dashboard. If I go to search and reporting, go to dashboards, we can look at my simple network activity dashboard. 
there's some data here. It's not a lot. If I go back the last seven days, we get some data, right? But it's really to just get you a feel for how to use Splunk, how to start searching data. There's some free training that I will add to that video and I'll show you, you know, how you can start working with it. You know, you can, you can get the container running, go do the free training and take the logs that you're getting into Splunk from your CML lab and start doing some tests on it. I'm gonna expand on this. I'm gonna start working with getting telemetry out of my boxes. So I'm gonna do some things with RESTConf, NETCONF, gRPC. Those are gonna require things like the 8000V or the Nexus 9000V because they do streaming telemetry. Uh, the lighter weight IOL nodes will not do that. So just some considerations, like if you plan to follow along or you're just trying to see how to use Splunk, if you wanna do the follow along, you're gonna want something with some fairly decent resources to run the container and those images. So as always, uh, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments section and I will answer them as I see them pop up. And as always, thanks for watching.